How many of you have heard of quantum physics yeah. or quantum mechanics or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Well, how many of you would say you have a fairly in-depth understanding of quantum mechanics? <laughs> okay. How many of you regret coming to this talk already? <laughs> All right. okay. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. Quantum physics is just a description of the universe on its smallest levels. Thanks. Good night. <laughs> no, but really, though, my goal here today isn't to scare anyone away from physics or to make you physicists, but just to offer some perspective and in making you more familiar with some of the more fundamental building blocks of our reality, hopefully open your eyes up a little bit to the mysterious elegance and beauty of our universe. The field of quantum mechanics itself dates back to the 1920s, which was founded in response to some pretty shocking experimental results from what is commonly known as the two-slit or double-slit experiment. Here's what it looks like. On the far left is a source, which emits a constant and controllable beam of light, which travels through a wall with two slits, and then hits a detector, which measures exactly where the light hits upon its face. This experiment was actually modeled off of earlier experiments dating as far back as the 1790s, and was constructed in order to answer for once and, once and for all if light was a continuous wave of energy or made of smaller particles or packets of energy called quanta. Approximately 20 years before this experiment, a scientist offered a theoretical proof of the quanta. And for any of you science history buffs out there who may or may not have heard of this scientist, his name was Albert Einstein. And as great as his theory may have been, it doesn't mean much if it doesn't match up to reality, so it was put to the test. In the first experiment, the scientist received some pretty troubling results. The light was acting as a wave. Think of a cork bobbing in water. Every time it bobs, ripples expand outward in a wave of energy. As the light passed through the slits, it produced two independent ripple patterns which expanded outward, interfering with one another, effectively canceling each other out in those places. So things weren't looking that good for the theory of the quanta. All these scientists were sitting around asking, maybe this Einstein guy really is just a crackpot. <laughs> I mean, maybe he could run for mayor of Toronto, but He's kind of crazy for a theoretical physicist. But then scientists tried a slightly varied version of the experiment. The setup was exactly the same, except this time they installed detectors along the experiment in order to measure or observe the light going through the two slits. And their results were so shocking and so unexpected that it shook science and everything we know about our universe down to its very core. The scientists found that the light was acting as if it were made of particles, proving Einstein correct. However, if you'll remember in the first experiment, the light acted as a wave. There's really only one explanation. The particles of light were interfering with themselves. In other words, they were in two places at once. Now, this may seem sort of abstract and hard to grasp, so think about it this way. Imagine a parking garage. There are two exits with a divider in the middle. And there's, imagine a car parked in front of the divider. As it accelerates forward, it doesn't pick one exit or the other to go out, and instead is aimed directly at the divider. Once it reaches it, it splits into two cars and goes out both exits at once. In quantum mechanics, this phenomenon is known as the uncertainty principle, which says essentially that a particle's position in space and the speed at which it is moving is fundamentally uncertain allowing it to be in multiple places at once. Mind-blowing, right? <laughs> sure, but here's where things really get weird. Remember in the first experiment that the light was acting as a wave. So something must have changed when the light was observed. Think about it this way. A baseball player steps up to the plate, and the pitcher throws the ball, but as soon as he does, the ball splits into multiple different balls, all with different trajectories, all traveling to the same spot in space. However, when we choose to observe the ball being thrown, it only has the one trajectory, the one that we see. Unless you're A-Rod in the playoffs, because there's just really no other explanation for how bad that is. But you know, <laughs> This experiment actually proves that an observer of an event actually affects that event itself. Let me say that again. An observer of an event affects the way that that event transpires. Now, maybe that's not so hard to grasp up here in Nevada County, because it's a little bit you know, psychedelic. But in quantum physics, 
This phenomenon is known as the measurement paradox, which says that when we try to observe or measure a particle, we actually affect its position and movement in space, effectively changing the outcome of our initial experiment. Makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, if not, I won't worry about it too much. Richard Feynman, winner of the 1965 Nobel Prize in Physics and generally considered to be the man for quantum mechanics, once said, I can safely say that no one understands quantum mechanics. <laughs> Even Einstein, who won his Nobel Prize for proving the theory of the quanta, effectively allowing the field of quantum physics to be created in the first place, remained skeptical of its findings all throughout his life, remarking, God does not play dice. <laughs> so you may be asking yourself, what on earth is a 17-year-old kid doing up here standing about quantum physics? I mean, he doesn't seem that weird, but you know. I don't know about that second part, but I do know only too well that not everyone is like me and are not necessarily concerned with understanding what makes the universe tick. So maybe you're thinking, sure, this is interesting, I suppose, but it doesn't really affect me at all. And you'd be right, you know. These phenomena are not really macro world problems. I mean, generally, when you drive your car to divide on a parking garage, you're, you may crash, but your car doesn't usually split into multiple trajectories dictated by a hierarchy of semi-random probabilities expressed through path integrals and in quantum field theory. <laughs> Although, if something like that does happen, I strongly encourage you to contact the quantum problems hotline. <laughs> Experts are standing by. So, why should you care? Well, even if you're not physicists, an awareness of these concepts can fundamentally change the way you perceive the world and consequently the way you interact with it. Here's a couple examples. First, take the uncertainty principle. It is impossible to know precisely where we will be in life, at what speed we will be moving, or what path we are taking. There is a fundamental element of uncertainty ingrained into the very fabric of the universe. Plans are nice and probably good to have, but nothing is definite or certain. <laughs> Second, look at the measurement paradox, which represents a fundamental truth to remember. The act of observing something affects that thing itself, potentially affecting its movement, behavior, or position. And this isn't just true for the quantum world, but the world we live in and experience every day. People act differently when they're alone than when they're in the presence of others. Imagine yourself driving down the road, and all of a sudden you realize there's a police car in the other lane. You instantly slow down, way below the speed limit, even though nothing's really changed, just because you've realized you're being observed in a particular way. Or maybe something has changed. I mean, we've all been there too, right? I said earlier that quantum physics was a description of how the smallest parts of our universe operate. I think it's pretty obvious that the smallest parts operate in a radically different way than the parts we see and interact with every day. But as hard as it is to believe, our entire world, everything we see, touch, feel, even our very selves, operate in this way at their core. Ultimately, you can never be sure when you'll end up asking yourself, how did I get here? So really, how much can it hurt to have some familiarity with the core building blocks of our beautiful and mysterious universe. Thank you. Maybe it's all inside. Got her head.